Lockdown, day one. How's everybody doing out there? Let's answer a stack of your questions about what's allowed and what's not. Let's look at a small detail that is causing Colorado's reported cases of COVID-19 to spike today. Let's visit with rural hospitals. So eerily quiet, they're asking for patients from the front range. Let's thank Colorado's kids for doing their part. Let's talk about whatever this is. And let's kick off a brand new segment. That's not how you social distance, because this is next. If we are looking at the curve of the COVID-19 pandemic in Colorado, we are starting to get into the, the straight up part. Confirmed cases had their largest single day increase overnight. There are a couple of reasons why. Some vital context. First off, testing. Test more find more and Colorado just tested a bunch more. We just cleared our backlog of several thousand cases. Also today we noticed there is an asterisk in the way that the state is recording cases. Now it's folks who have tested positive as well as people who are being treated for COVID-19 because they have the symptoms and they have contact with somebody who tested positive. They aren't always going to waste an extra test in that uh, situation. So knowing the context, let's take a look at the numbers. 24 Colorados are now known to have died from COVID-19, 184 people hospitalized, 1,430 cases total, and 10,122 people have been tested. One of those people tested was Denver Mayor Michael Hancock, whose test came back negative this week. He was tested because somebody that he works with was showing symptoms. Goes without saying, there is no way in the world that you or me would get a test in a situation like that. Asymptomatic and just around somebody who has symptoms. But like we saw with the testing of the president and the vice president, Denver's mayor gets a test in that situation because he's considered critical to the incident response. 12 hours into Colorado's stay at home order and you are peppering us with questions. That's fine. Let's get after it. Our Marshall Zellinger has some answers. Yes or no? Can I get pulled over simply for driving? No. Can I go for a leisurely drive or take my motorcycle out? Yeah, you can, but Governor Jared Polis has asked that you only leave your home when you absolutely need to. Can I pick someone up at the airport? Yes. Can I take my dog to the dog park? This one's a little tricky. The state public health order refers people to their local jurisdiction for anything besides state parks. Dog parks are closed in Denver because they're considered an amenity, like a playground or tennis court. But the large dog parks in Douglas County are open. What about construction? Josh Doverspike sent me videos from Castle Rock and wants to know why this type of work is okay. It's because construction and housing are considered critical business, which is allowed during the stay at home order as long as workers adhere to social distancing. So what are and are not critical businesses? I want to empower you to find the answers to your questions as you think of them. On our website, 9news.com, scroll down to the featured section and click on the first story, full text, stay at home order. On the 9 News app, you need to scroll down to the next section, just past our tweets, and you'll see the link on the left. Here, you'll see the plain language stay at home order. It defines necessary activities for your questions about what you're allowed or not allowed to do outside. It also defines what critical business means. There are 13 sections, healthcare, infrastructure, manufacturing, retail, and other professions all broken down specifically by the type of work. If you do see your profession, your work is allowed to be open, but does not have to be. If you don't see your profession, it's not considered critical and should be closed unless you can work from home. And I don't share that link as a cop out, like we won't answer all of your questions, but you probably have questions faster than we can answer them. Plus, today that public health order was amended to allow a little more leeway for educators and places of worship. So it could change daily. It's a good link to keep looking at. One thing, Kyle, people should not be doing, do not call 911 for education on this public health order. Oh, geez. Oh, oh. I, I was going to say there's really people that would do that, but you and I both know there's really people who would do just about anything in this world. All right. Thank you, mm -hmm. Marshall. Colorado has lost a legend of our local music scene to COVID-19. Freddie Rodriguez Jr. Sr. died from what his friends say were complications from COVID-19. Rodriguez Sr. was a fixture on the jazz scene. For 40 years, you'd find him playing his saxophone 
at El Chapultepec in Denver. He's the last. He is the last of an era of musicians who came up at a time when it was good, it was cool, it, it was, it was, it, everybody had open arms. Uh, Freddie was one of those people. If you could show somebody something about music, if you could inspire a musician, young or old, uh, Freddie was there. Freddie was a father and a grandfather. Family friends said that once the public danger passes, they want to hold a public memorial and a big musical celebration of his life. Hospitals in rural Colorado are quiet right now. It's a whole different kind of pressure compared to what hospitals on the Front Range are feeling. Rural hospitals would like more patients, so they would have the funds to keep operating. Anusha Roy explains. Only hospital for Lincoln County. There is not a hospital in Elbert County, Eastern Arapaho, and Eastern Adams County, as, as well as uh, parts of Washington County. Kevin Stansberry is the CEO of Lincoln Community Hospital in Hugo. He said when things get really bad. We don't do ICU care here, and we don't have any ventilators that we would keep patients on a ventilator. So we would be transporting them to the city. Right now, there are no COVID-19 patients in his hospital. What is the biggest pressure on your hospital right now because of COVID-19? So because the, the recommendation is not to do any elective procedures, uh, that's a big uh, source of revenue for us. Um, elective surgeries and elective diagnostic tests. So we're very concerned now about our revenue streams and being able to stay open. It's actually an issue for, for um, all of rural Colorado, as well as any hospital that we would call vulnerable. Julie Lonberg with the Colorado Hospital Association said what they're seeing is a domino effect of people doing the right thing and trying to save personal protective equipment. You know, I really don't have to go get that x-ray today. I can wait. That's doing the right thing. Now healthcare providers are getting creative. We can easily take six or seven patients from the city who are either COVID positive, but are on the tail end of the disease, or maybe there's another diagnosis. That, in theory, would free up beds at hospitals set up to deal with the worst of COVID-19, while helping out rural hospitals up against a tight money deadline. I'd say we, we maybe have 30 days. Yeah, so they're essentially talking about a patient swap. That's kind of what it sums up to. So a lot of rural hospitals, they were already dealing with a smaller budget. So it's going to vary hospital to hospital what kind of services that they can provide. Now, the State Department of Health said that moving patients to hospitals with more capacity is definitely a part of their conversation right now. Not just rural Colorado, but, you know, any hospital that has capacity. Kyle, at this point, we don't really know how much this is going to cost per patient, but we do know that is just one piece of a much larger conversation about maximizing the resources in the state. And Nusha, I was super encouraged to hear that those rural hospitals in Colorado are learning one of the lessons from the Italian model of care, which is to, to decentralize the health care, to try and not let the hospital be the place where people get each other sick. Yeah, so specifically in Lincoln County, they actually have doctors and nurses going to people's houses to care for them instead of asking them to come to clinics or hospitals because they're hoping that's going to limit the number of people have exposed. You know, it, it is important to note, though, that right now they don't have as nearly as big of a problem as some of the other counties in Colorado. Sure, they've got a little flexibility to do that. Mm -hmm. But man, you listen to those Italian doctors, they will say that is the key. Have doctors in people's houses unless somebody yep. needs ICU care. All right. Thank you so much, Anusha. May I make a recommendation? It's something that we don't really have time to get into detail here, but I want to make sure that you have this resource. So when we talk about the federal stimulus plan, that um, coronavirus aid package that includes individual payments to Americans, I know that you have a lot of questions about how much you're likely to receive and when and whether you need to sign up someplace. NBC News has a terrific in-depth explainer on this that I think will answer most of your questions. It's a great resource, so please check out the link on the next Facebook page and share it with your friends as well. CU Boulder students are now in their second week of online classes. A biology professor told us it has not all been easy, but there are some perks like being able to chat and actually answer students' questions faster than she'd be able to do during an in-person class. She shared her advice for other teachers and students who are also heading online. You know, for, for myself and for other people like me who are who are trying to make this transition, 
the most critical thing is to, I guess, be kind to like yourself, but also and also to your students because no, I think nobody's actually expecting us to be excellent at it right off the bat because we had no, we had no warning. I'm still here for my students and that's the most important thing. Professor Jennifer Knight told us she had 125 students in a recent online class. They had some tech hiccups, but she just apologized and resumed teaching. So if we could go back in time three weeks to the day that Colorado had its first confirmed case of COVID-19, what do you wish you could tell yourself then three weeks ago? So I bring that up because it seems like so much about our lives has changed in the last three weeks, but it's only going to continue changing. So what do you suppose we'd like to be able to look back and say three weeks from now, something that we might realize here tonight? I'll tell you what I'm trying to keep front of mind. First off, treasure and be grateful for anything that seems normal, because we truly don't know when the last bits of normalcy might be taken away. Focus on what remains within our control, things like, whether you go outside and stand in the sunshine any day that you can, even your breathing, I'm telling you, focus on your breathing when you're stressed. It truly does help. Remember to listen to the people who told you the truth, the people who told you that this is what was coming. Let's stop wasting as much time on the deniers and the hoaxers. I get the feeling that even they know the truth, even if they're not willing to admit it. And remember, Above all, our decisions and actions matter. They matter to protect our friends and our family and our neighbors. They matter in the way that we raise our voices together, calling for financial support for workers and businesses that are in real trouble right now. And our voices and our decisions matter as we encourage each other in whatever the next three weeks bring. A virtual party for a real retirement because she's the reason that so many of them are working for us. Health experts say that reopening America by Easter is not realistic. But look, it's a bunny bringing you wine. We're here to have fun and deliver just that little bit of lift that we all need. That's next.
farewell is now done from a distance. Colorado Parks and Wildlife workers gathered virtually today to say goodbye to Jenna Sanchez, a volunteer coordinator who is retiring after 23 years there. CBW says a good number of its employees got into that line of work because Jenna spoke in their classroom years ago. Leave CPW with the agency's Career Pathways Award, which appears to be a cool bear sculpture. Sunshine and mild weather for this first week of spring, but things are changing tonight with a storm already moving into Colorado from the west. Look at the temperature spread. Low 80s in southern Colorado, mid 50s in downtown Denver, and 40s up in the high country. It's all about the wind. And winds out of the southwest are bringing in this cloud shield that we're seeing over east central Colorado. But it's the winds to the north coming in with a cold front that's going to bring the snow to Wyoming and increase the wind down in southern Colorado. The red flag warning will cancel out at 8 o'clock concerns for high fire danger due to the wind, the warm weather today and the low relative humidity, but moisture will be increasing tomorrow. We'll go mostly cloudy with rain and snow showers in the afternoon and evening, maybe an inch or two of snow on the grass by Saturday morning and then skies will clear. The red flag warning, the only advisory out far state this hour and in Denver, a calmer evening with lows around freezing and increasing clouds. Chilly day tomorrow, mid 40s, rain and snow showers will end Saturday morning. A warming trend for the upcoming weekend with high back in the mid 60s by Wednesday. And if you happen to see a moose on the loose, send that picture in. We'd love to see it. Ain't no party like a virtual party because a virtual party don't require people to gather in violation of Colorado's stay home order. Let's recognize our state's kids. They're making sacrifices too. And when you see the bunny, it means your wine has arrived. What a time to be alive. Next. Each night we take time to celebrate a group of people who are keeping Colorado running right now. We've talked about sanitation workers and nurses and lab te techs. I want to take a moment 
to acknowledge the sacrifices that kids are making these days. I mean, they're away from school and their teachers and their friends. They're missing sleepovers, playing with the neighbors and birthday parties. Amos turned eight recently and his family virtually gathered, clustered on smartphones and tablets in front of him. Grandparents, aunts and cousins, nobody else is getting a slice of the cake, but they wanted to be there to wish him a happy birthday. And Drayden is turning 16 today. His mom, Patricia, wrote me this morning to say that, man, he is doing his, his best going from being a social teenager to hanging out close to home. And she asked if I might say something about that. Drayden, here's the deal. You are going to have years and years ahead to do a lot of fun teenage stuff. What you are doing right now is very adult. Your mom is proud of you. Colorado is thankful for what you're doing and what you are not doing in order to protect our vulnerable neighbors. And Drayden, happy birthday. I have been informed by a few of you that wine is helpful right about now. Um, I would know that myself. I'm much more of a White Claw kind of guy. Uh, but I'm thinking that I'm missing out on the curbside wine delivery by Bunny. Hi. Thanks for calling Big Speed Bali. This is Marlo Yetka and my husband, Chad Yetka. So Chad came up with this great idea which I thought was kind of crazy at first but he thought well why not dress up in costumes every day a different costume and deliver people wine growlers and food to them um, with a little bit of a smile <laughs> we're, we're doing our best to make a difference these are very trying times and you know, it, we're, it's an unprecedented crisis that we're going through but how we get through this matters and instead of putting on a frown, if we put on a smile, the Mildred, the Mildred the Milkmaid suit, uh, Tyrannosaurus Rex, or perhaps even a horse, and if we can get one, two, ten people to smile, then that's a small victory in this war that we're fighting. Well, let's, let's face it, it's reciprocal. And smiles are as infectious, if not more, than what we're currently battling. And when one smile turns into two, into ten, then... Uh, we're, we're, we're winning the bargain as well. Uh, if we deliver a smile, we get one back in return, then that's a win-win for us all. Get back in your car already! <laughs> See, how can you not laugh?
We're tweaking our old That's Not How You Colorado segment to remind some people that's not how you social distance. Restaurants going pickup and delivery is great, but not when people are just stuffed into the restaurant. Adriana sent us this photo of the Buffalo Wild Wings in Westminster, where staff tried to get people to separate, and they wouldn't. Actual bison? Much better at this. Connie Keehan sent me a picture of the bison at Daniels Park, showing the humans how social distancing is done. So this was supposed to be opening day. I wear this jacket every opening day. Sorry, Rockies fans. Hang in there. Life will return to normal sooner or later. From my home to yours, see you next time.